Hey gang, welcome back. And we're looking at our second film that deals with ripping off a much better known and made film. Uh, this one is a, a better film than last week. It's not as boring and does have some uh, good special effects and makeup work in it. Uh, it's of course very low budget and it has in its cast a bona fide international movie star. It's called Creature. Uh, the original title was supposed to be The Titan Fine, but the producers decided that they uh, wanted something a little more, a little more punch in the uh, title, so they changed it to Creature. Uh, it was directed and written uh, by William Malone, whose other big work was uh, Scared of the Dark, which was another monster movie. But, uh, and there is an interesting little tag in. Tie in, I'm sorry, tie in with um, uh, that previous film. Uh, it starts out, this one does, with. Two men on uh, the one uh, moon of Saturn, Titan, and uh, they find an interesting canister and uh, they decide to get some pictures of it. This is an archaeological uh, dig, and you know, so he's going to have one, you know, be next to it or sitting on it for scale. On second thought, Ted, maybe you should be sitting here and I should be up. Uh... Howard, are you okay? Howard! Yeah, this is gonna be a gooey film. Uh, anyway, soon after, the ship that had, uh, had that crew uh, was making its way back to Earth and things aren't okay with it. Well, after that bit of excitement, we are then introduced to our main cast, which is a group of scientists who are being sent to Titan to make a claim on this uh, site. Uh, they're from a company called NTI. Uh, doesn't matter what the uh, initials stand for because it's just a company they made up for uh, the film. And of course the head of it is a company rep who in a precursor to aliens or no I think aliens was first. Anyway, the company rep is someone you just know is going to do nothing but make bad decisions. And while they make the trip, we get little character moments with uh, the, uh, the crew. A couple of them hook up, uh, the, uh, the pilot and one of the uh, other bridge crew have a uh, sort of a flirty relationship. And... There is a security guard that has been added to this crew for this trip. The, uh, the company rep uh, brought her aboard and she takes all of the uh, narcotics from the infirmary. Basically anything that can be relaxant or put someone to sleep, she takes. Don't explain why. And then after all this, they uh, finally get to Titan, where they find that there is a ship from a German company that has landed. And wanting to uh, get the jump on them, 
because they know where the find is, but the Germans don't. The rep orders him to set down in a specific spot away from the, um, the German ship. And the captain says, no, we have to find a secure setting. We can't just set down willy-nilly, but he's overrode, so down they go. What's the matter? Everyone, maintain your position, please. After a bit of uh, recriminations back and forth between the captain and the uh, company rep, uh, and with part of the ship being broken open, and they're going to be in need of air, the captain overrides the company rep and says they're going to head over to the German ship for help. So, security guard. A couple of the crew and the captain, they head over the German ship and they find it's empty. Nobody's on it. Very strange. Well, not exactly. Uh, the crew member Susan does find something. She's chased down the hallways by that creature. And uh, Bryce, yeah, Bryce, the security person, she shoots at it, but no effect. So they try to get out the airlock, but Susan doesn't make it. And uh, Johns, who is the one she hooked up with, goes gets hysterical and has to be sedated by Bryce. They make their way back to their own ship, and uh, while Bryce is in her quarters changing, we finally get, after the film is almost halfway done, our international superstar act. I see you like guns. What else do you like? You haven't told me what else you like. Violence. <laughs> Bad touch, Claus. Bad touch. That is, of course, the renowned international star Klaus Kinski, a man known for amazing talent in acting and as the most difficult person to deal with in the world. He's probably most famous for the work he did with uh, Werner Herzog in films like uh, Aguirre, Wrath of God, Fitzcarraldo, the remake of Nosferatu, and he's also known for a lot of the schlock he made, such as Jess Franco's Jack the Ripper and Count Dracula, as well as in the 80s, he made a lot of uh, films like Schizoid and Crawl Space. Although he first came to fame uh, in the German, uh, I believe they were pronounced Krimi films, which was their version of a crime thriller, usually based on a novel from uh, Edgar Wallace, very popular in Germany after, uh, in the 60s. And of course, he was one of the foes against Clint Eastwood in For a Few Dollars More. 
and uh, you're wondering how did he get aboard the ship well he's glad to answer that so who are you hans rudy hofner richter dynamics well mr hofner how did you get aboard if you hadn't noticed there were a few space troopers missing i had come in from the back oh gotta love him he will steal every scene he's in with little effort uh during this uh, interrogation he explains that they had found what uh turns out to be an alien menagerie and filled with canisters of creatures from all over obviously uh, they don't know who made it or where it all came from but they took some of the canisters into their ship and it turns out it was cracked you know the one from the beginning of the film and whatever it was got out and it killed his crew and they uh had a very disconcerting uh, discovery that this thing can animate its victims. Which brings us to John, who is mourning the loss of Susan when he gets a unsettling visit. John. John. Help me, please. Enticing him outside, John follows her, and she strips naked. And he's kind of into it, even though she's covered in blood. And then he learns too late, it was all a trap. After he collapses and she gets really weird with the body, we finally see exactly how the creature takes control of his victims. Gnarly. Well, now in the last third of the film, things start to really speed up. Now, Hans says there's a lot of explosives on the German ship, and he thinks they should use it to blow the creature up. They don't think that's such a good idea. You know, it could cause more damage and they lose what little air they have. So, Hans has, says, well, you know, there's a lot of oxygen out by the, uh, the dig site they found at the menagerie. So he and Bryce, they go out to collect the air tanks from the previous victims. About this time, Johns contacts their ship to say, hey, I went back to the German ship and it only needs a few repairs and then we can take off with this ship. And they're like, oh, okay. And as soon as he clicks off, the captain is immediately suspicious. So, he, company rep, and the doctor, ship's doctor, they go out to the German ship, leaving, uh, oh, what is her name? Uh, uh, I wrote it here. Beth. Beth. She's the love interest of the captain. Now, while Hans and Bryce are collecting the air tanks, they run into a bit of an ambush. Hoffner. What is it? It's moving. It's Susan. 
I, I, I knew that jump scare was coming. <clears throat> anyway, they put up a struggle, but we don't really see uh, what happens. We'll get back to them later. Right now, the captain, the rep, and the doctor all make it over to uh, the German ship where Johns has a very large bandage, I'm sorry, on his head. He said he got a uh, chemical burn from uh, working on the ship. Uh, he goes down to uh, engineering and the doctor goes with him so that uh, she can give a better examination of his wound. And of course it turns out this has all been a ruse. Are you scaring me? <laughs> oh my God! Oh! 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 She starts to battle with John and his face comes off. <laughs> but uh captain and the rep are starting to get suspicious so they grab a couple of guns and they head down to engineering where the captain fights with uh, John not very well and the rep finally proves his mettle <laughs> Shades of Scanners. Meanwhile, back at the broken ship. No, you can't have that. Scavengers. Here. Uh, meanwhile, back at the broken ship, power goes out. So Beth reluctantly starts to put on a suit so she can uh, go out and check it out. And... Well, someone in a suit enters, and we get to see which one of, between Bryce and Hans, survived, or did they? Ah! Ah! Ooh, Hans, you're not looking too good. Well, this leads to chase through the ship out the airlock and to the German ship before she can get there she runs out of air and collapses but the being controlling Hans is clever he grabs Beth and drags her to the ship and contacts the guys on the ship to be let in uh, there's a brief argument about um, whether or not they should. But the captain overrules the rep because it's Beth and he's bringing her in. care of that. Of course they still have the problem of the original creature. And then in a moment of meta-ness I guess Beth remembers something. I saw a movie once where a, a group of people were, were trapped in an ice station by a carrot from another planet. <laughs> Wait a minute! They killed it by electrocution. They set up a grid on the floor, and when they got it in position, they simply melted it away. It's as good an idea as any, considering 
the monster stole their spacesuits, so Beth is the only one that's got one. But you gotta admire a film where they come up with a plan and actually admit they got it from another film. I like that boldness. So they set it up and after much running around, they fry him. <laughs> Awesome. So, movie's over. Nope. You know, for someone that watches movies, she should have seen that one coming. Anyway, the creature takes her hostage, and the captain and the rep come up with a plan. The rep will lure the creature away, and the captain will go to the rescue. While setting all this up, the uh, rep finds the explosives that uh, Hans had mentioned. So he grabs those and a timer. And he uh, is luring the creature away. And he comes upon a way to get the creature off the ship. So, while the captain rescues Beth, the rep lures the creature, and it doesn't quite go off as planned. Do it. Do it. Do it. Fortunately, that really didn't do anything because the creature just climbed back aboard in the air at the airlock, which leads the captain to decide he has to sacrifice himself. Sadly, the bomb doesn't ignite. All seems lost, but. The filmmakers included a dulces machina. Oh, it did go on. <coughs> oh, yes, it did. Well, that finally did it. Oh, and if you were wondering what happened to Bryce and where she's been this whole time. Well, when Susan killed Hoffner. I ran back to the Shenandoah and there was no one there, and then I came here. You're gone a long time. I got lost. Okay, I added that. You know, they did not put a rim shot in the actual film, but I couldn't resist. This mic. Anyway, highly enjoyable. Not a great film, but uh, despite a few slow spots, it's pretty fast paced. A lot of good suspense, action, gore, and a few bits of nudity for those of you that like that kind of thing. And some interesting uses of sound effects. See if you can uh, remember where this came from. Ugh. 
That's right. They slapped a Star Wars blaster sound effect for the sound of the door opening. Apparently the of uh, Star Trek wasn't available. <laughs> uh, the acting in this film's pretty decent. Um, most give okay performances. Um, of the cast, I would say second best performance would be by the actress that played Bryce. Uh, Diane Salinger, who, of course, had a pretty good career. Uh, having been in Pee-wee's Big Adventure, Ghost World, Batman Returns, uh, she played the Penguin's mother, and uh, many others. Uh, uh, very intimidating in this film. And she plays well off the overall, though not in very much, real star of this flick. Klaus Kinski, who blows everyone off the screen just by eating a sandwich. There ought to be enough air to do one more trip to my ship. And what happens when we get to your ship? We have no more air to come back on. We won't have to come back. I can lure this thing outside. I haven't seen an actor dominate a scene while eating since I saw William Shatner eating pudding in visiting hours. Check that out. Yeah, I I enjoy this film a lot. It is well made, even though it's low budget, and uh, fairly decent characters if they are somewhat two dimensional. And uh, it's good direction. Okay, acting. Uh, it's not going to set any new standards in filmmaking or uh, change the world in any way, but as a low budget uh, Saturday afternoon flick, and does what it uh, set out to do, which is be a uh, workable knockoff of Alien. And it does that quite well. Well, I haven't got much more to say about this one. Uh, please hit like, share, and subscribe. And uh, stay after the credits for my favorite scene.